motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings, family. Another episode here with thequeendome.com. We are continuing with the pineal gland third eye activation. Today is part three. And before we get started, let's get ourselves into the present moment and honor the present state. So we'll take a couple of deep breaths, focusing our attention on right now, focusing our awareness on right now and let's breathe all right fantastic hope your day is going beautiful hope your week is going even better and like I said, we're going to continue with the pineal gland third eye activation. Today is part three. And I'm reading a book called um, Becoming Supernatural. I think I mentioned this book a couple of weeks ago. The author is Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I happened to come across a chapter in his book called the Pineal Gland. And I thought, why don't I read some of this to you all it's a very fascinating chapter i read the whole chapter and um, i wanted to go back and read it and i said well why don't i read some of it to you all on the episode since we're talking about the pineal gland and activating the pineal gland so i am on uh page 260 in this book all right and some good stuff here. All right, so the pineal gland is a neuroendocrine transducer secreting melatonin responsible for physiological circadian rhythm control. A new form of biomineralization has been studied in the human pineal gland and consists of small crystals. Now, we talked about these crystals uh, yesterday, these magnetite crystals that are less than 20 microns in length. These crystals are responsible for electromechanical biological transduction mechanism in the pineal gland due to the structure and the piezoelectric properties. Now, the study uh, that he's talking about here says the pineal gland is a neuroendocrine transducer capable of receiving and converting signals within the brain. When the pineal gland acts as a transducer, it can pick up frequencies above our three-dimensional space-time sensory-based reality. Once the pineal gland is activated, it can tune into higher dimensions of this space and time, which we learned in uh, the previous chapter, it's the realm of time-space. So like a, like a TV, it can then turn information carried on those frequencies into vivid imagery and surreal, lucid, transcendental experiences in our mind, including profoundly heightened multi-sensory visions beyond our vocabulary. This is a bit like experiencing a multi-dimensional IMAX movie. At this point, you may be wondering, since this little gland exists inside our skull, how am I going to exert mechanical stress on the crystals in it to create a piezoelectric effect and activate the pineal gland so it becomes like an antenna? And how will that antenna pick up frequencies and information beyond matter and light so that it can transduce 
those electromagnetic signals or signatures into meaningful imagery like a transcendental experience beyond this third dimensional reality. For the pineal gland to become activated, certain important things must happen. So we're going to go through and uh, take a look at the things that he mentions here um, in his book called Becoming Supernatural. The first thing he talks about here is the piezoelectric effect. So critical to creating the piezoelectric effect in the pineal gland are the calcite crystals mentioned above. Remember, these are very tiny crystals, approximately 1 to 20 microns in length. To put this into context, their size can range anywhere from 100 to 1 quarter to the width of a human hair. Remember I told you you would have to put the brain up under a microscope, a microscope in order to see these and they look like little thorns uh, coming out from the skull around the brain. Sort of like the uh, depiction of the mythological character of Jesus that they had hanging on a cross. So now the purpose of breathing techniques, some of the breath work that I've shared with you as well, is to pull the mind out of the body by liberating potential energy stored as emotions in the lower three energy centers. So in the lower three chakras is what he's talking about. So as we inhale and contract those intrinsic muscles, follow our breath from the perineum all the way up our spine to the top of our head, and then hold our breath and squeeze those muscles more we're increasing pressure. So as mentioned earlier, this is the internal pressure created when you push up against your insides. So you're, you're pushing that, that Kundalini energy, that life force, that Sekhmet, that Prana energy, you're pushing that when you hold your breath and lift something heavy. Okay, so we're doing the exact same thing with the breath work techniques. And some of these techniques I've shared on my YouTube channel. So the word piezoelectric is derived from the Greek words piezine, which means to squeeze or to press, and piezo, which means to push. So it's no coincidence that I ask you to hold your breath and squeeze those intrinsic muscles. So when you do this, you're pushing cerebrospinal fluid up against the pineal gland exerting mechanical stress on it. This mechanical stress translates into an electrical charge and it's the exact action that compresses the stacked crystals in the pineal gland and creates a piezoelectric effect the crystals of the pineal gland generate an electric charge in response to the stress that you're applying. Now again, I've uh, shared with you time and time again that we are electrical beings. And the energy, um, that life force energy, you know, which goes by the name Kundalini, Sekhmet, Prana, Chi, Ka, that energy is electrical and runs up and down the spine, the spinal column, up to our brain. Okay? So what he's talking about here on this page is he's talking about a breath work. In fact, um, like I said, I mentioned uh, when we were talking about Kundalini, a meditation, where you can do a particular type of breath work to bring that life force energy up the spinal column, up to the pineal gland, up to the brain to activate the third eye. Now I'm going to continue and read a little bit more here. One of the unique characteristics of the piezoelectric effect is that it's reversible, meaning that the materials exhibited in direct piezoelectric effect, the crystals, also exhibit a converse piezoelectric effect. Once the crystals in the gland are compressed and are creating an electrical charge, the electromagnetic field that is emanating from the pineal gland 
causes the crystals in it to stretch as the field increases. When the crystals generating the electromagnetic field reach their limit and can stretch no further, they contract and the electromagnetic field reverses direction and moves inward toward the pineal gland. When the electromagnetic field reaches the pineal gland crystals, it compresses them again, producing yet another electromagnetic field. This cycle of expanding and reversing the field perpetuates a pulsating electromagnetic field. Wow. It's no wonder then when asked to hold your breath, squeeze and contract those muscles, it's no surprise that I insist that you repeat this process over and over. As you keep doing the breath work and holding and squeezing again and again with every cycle of breathing, you're activating the piezoelectric properties of the pineal gland. So what he's saying there is basically the meditation practice, obviously you have to do it over and over and over again. And as you do that, that pulsating um, uh, scenario, it increases the electromagnetic field, activating your pineal gland. Continuing in the book, the more you do this, the more you speed up the cycles per second of the expansion of contraction of this electromagnetic field, making the pulses get faster and faster. Now the pineal gland becomes a pulsating antenna capable of picking up subtler and subtler, faster electromagnetic frequencies. Okay, so we talked about the movement of the uh, cerebrospinal fluid doing the breath work. Now let's build on that a little bit. So as the fluid enters the brain, it moves up through the central canal, through the space between the, the spinal column and the spinal cord. So from this juncture, it flows in two directions. First, the fluid moves into the fourth ventricle, followed by the third ventricle. And as the fluid travels from the fourth to the third ventricle, it passes through a narrow path or channel and nestled right at the back of the third ventricle rests what looks like a tiny pine cone. That's what the pineal means. This is the pineal gland and it's about the size of a large grain of rice. Second, the cerebrospinal fluid also flows around the back of the cerebellum to the other side of the pineal gland, surrounding the entire gland with pressurized fluid. So by increasing the pressure, you funnel a greater volume of fluid into the chamber of the third ventricle, as well as from the space around the cere cerebellum. So when you hold your breath and squeeze, this extra volume of fluid exerts pressure from both directions up against the crystals, causing them to compress and create the piezoelectric effect. This is the first event that must take place to activate the pineal gland. All right. All right, so another uh, step in activating the pineal gland. Cerebral spinal fluid moves through a closed system called the ventricular system. The ventricular system facilitates the movement of this fluid from the base of the spine up through the spinal column through the four chambers of the brain called a aqueducts or ventricles and back down the sacrum, the base of the spine. So when you inhale and follow your breath to the top of your head and then you hold your breath and you squeeze up and in, you're accelerating the cerebrospinal fluid. Now on the surface, the pineal gland are tiny hairs called cilia and that's Latin for eyelashes. The action of the accelerated fluid moving faster than normal through the chambers of the ventricular system tickles the tiny hairs which overstimulates the pineal gland. Because the pineal gland is shaped like a phallus, the stimulation produced by the acceleration of the fluid moving past it combined with the electrical activation created by an increase in the pressure in the closed system causes the gland to ejaculate some very profound upgraded metabolites of melatonin into the brain. So you're now one step closer to activating the pineal gland and having a transcendental experience. Wow, this is very, very, very interesting. All 
All right, so uh, continuing on here, much like sending a rocket ship into space, overcoming gravity to get it off the ground is the part that requires the most energy. So to move that energy from our lower centers demands a great deal of intensity and effort. The breath becomes our passionate intention to free ourselves from the self-limiting emotions of our past. The spinal column becomes the delivery mechanism for this energy. And the top of the head becomes the target. Remember what we did in the Kundalini Awakening series, right? Taught you how to breathe, visualizing that energy coming from the base of your spine up to the top of your head. So as you know by now, every time you perform the breath work, you send charged particles up the spinal column. As these particles increase in velocity and acceleration, they create what's known as an inductane field. This inductance field reverses the flow of two-way information that typically facilitates communication from the brain to the body and to the body to the brain, much like a vacuum. This inductance field draws the energy from the from those lower centers, he's talking chakras, energy involved with orgasm, consumption, digestion, fight or flight, stress and control, he's talking about the lower three chakras, and delivers it directly to the brain stem in a spiraling motion. So as the energy travels up through each vertebrae, it passes the nerves that run from the spinal cord to different parts of the body. And some of that energy is in transfer through the peripheral nerves that affect the tissues and the organs of the body. The current that runs along these nerve channels activates the body's meridian system, resulting in all other systems of the body getting more and more energy. This is why that energy is called the life force energy. Okay. Once the energy reaches the brain, it must pass through the rectum reticular formation. It's the job of the reticular formation to constantly edit information, going from the brain to the body as well as from the body to the brain. This formation is part of a system called the reticular activating system, or RAS, which is responsible for levels of wakefulness. For instance, when you wake up from a deep sleep because you hear a sound in your house, it's the RAS that alerts you and arouses you. That's its rudimentary function. However, as the sympathetic nervous system is activated and merges with the parasympathetic nervous system, instead of depleting the body's stored energy, it releases that energy back to the brain. Once this energy reaches the brain stem, the thalamic gate opens like a door and energy moves through the reticular formation to the thalamus where it relays information to the neocortex. Now the reticular formation is open and you experience greater levels of awareness. In a sense, you become more conscious and more awakened. Think of the thalamus as a big train station with tracks leading to the higher centers of the brain. That's how the brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns. Now as a... Um, as a side note, there are two individual thalama in the midbrain, one on each side, which feed each hemisphere in the neocortex. So the pineal gland sits right between them, facing uh, the back of the brain. So when the energy reaches each thalamic junction, remember that the thalamus is like a, a relay station to all other parts of the brain. These thalami send a message directly to the pineal gland to secrete its metabolites into the brain. The effect is that the thinking neocortex becomes aroused and goes into higher brainwave patterns like gamma. So the nature of those chemical derivatives of melatonin relaxes the body and at the same time awakens the mind. So if you remember, when you're in beta brainwaves, your sympathetic nervous system is aroused for an emergency in your outer world and utilizes energy to survive. The difference with gamma brainwaves is that instead of losing vital energy, you're liberating and creating more energy in your body. You're not in an emergency or a survival state when this occurs. You're in bliss. And your sympathetic nervous system is switching on to arouse you to pay more attention to whatever is happening within your mind. When energy moves from the body to the brain, a torus field is created around the body. 
So as you run a current up your spinal column by accelerating the movement of cerebral spinal fluid, remember cerebral spinal fluid is just Kundalini, Sekhmet, life force energy, chi, ka, prana, all the same, okay? Your body becomes like a magnet and you create an electromagnetic field around you. A torus field represents a dynamic flow of energy. And at the same time, the torus field is moving up, out, and around your body. When the pineal gland becomes activated, a reverse torus field of electromagnetic energy is drawing energy into your body through the top of your head. Since all frequency carries information, now your pineal gland is receiving information from beyond the visible light field and from beyond your senses. Remember, again, I mentioned, we can only see 1%. We're only aware of 1%. That's why they say we only use 1% of our brains. When you open up and activate your pineal gland, you get access to 99% of the light spectrum that's not seen by the naked eye and not fail or not uh, felt by normal everyday human beings. So when these three happenings occur in tandem, it's going to feel like you're having an orgasm in your head. You've now created an antenna in your brain, and this antenna is picking up information from realms beyond matter and beyond space and time. Information is no longer coming from your senses or your eyes. Interaction with your environment. Instead, you're getting information from the quantum field moving to another eye, your third eye, from the pineal gland in the back of your brain. When melatonin gets an upgrade, magic happens. Wow, this is phenomenal. When your pineal gland or the third eye is awakened because it is picking up higher frequencies, these higher energies alter the chemistry of melatonin. The higher the frequency, the greater the alteration. It's the translation of information into chemistry that primes you for this transcendental mystical moments. Now you're opening the door to higher dimensions of space and time. This is why I like to call the pineal gland an alchemist because it transmutes melatonin into some very profound radical neurotransmitters. As higher frequencies and higher states of consciousness interact with the pineal gland, one of the first things to happen is that these frequencies transmutes melatonin into chemicals called benzodiazepines. We'll just call that benzo. So benzos are a class of drugs from which Valium is created that anesthetize, ana, I'm sorry, anesthetize the analytical mind. So all of a sudden the thinking brain relaxes and stops analyzing. So I guess, yeah, that the etymology of that is anesthesia. Okay, so according to functional brain scans, benzo suppresses neural activity in the amygdala, the brain's survival center. This limits chemicals that cause you to feel fear, anger, agitation, aggression, sadness, or pain. Now your body feels calm and relaxed, but your mind is awakened. Another chemical created from melatonin produces a class of very powerful antioxidants called pinolins. Pinolins are important because they attack free radicals which harm your cells and cause aging. These antioxidants are anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial. That's a perfect formula to upgrade melatonin's normal role as an antioxidant to a role of a supercharged antioxidant that further restores and heals the body to a greater degree than the melatonin molecule normally does. Wow. This is phenomenal. This is why I wanted to, to read this to you and read it again. This is absolutely phenomenal. If you take that molecule and tweak it again into a cousin of melatonin, you find the same chemical that makes animal, animals hibernate. When melatonin, which makes us sleepy and dreamy, alters just slightly into this more powerful molecule, it carries a message to extend, rest, and repair even further. This message also causes the body's metabolism to slow, in some cases for months. 
it makes sense then that when mammals hibernate, they break the typical habits of their habitat. For example, they lose their sex drive, their appetite, their interest in or need to move about in their environment and their connection to social networks. They hide to protect themselves and to feel safe. And during this time of going within, their body goes into status, stasis. The same might be true for us as these uh, values elevate. Because the body is no longer the mind, we temporarily lose our interest in the outer world. And because we have no biological drivers and aren't distracted with bodily needs, we're able to move more fully into the present moment and go deeply within. If you're going to dream, the dream of the future, wouldn't it be a good idea to get your body out of the way? If you take that molecule and advance it yet again, you produce the same chemical found in electric eels. A phosphorescent, bioluminescent chemical that amplifies energy in the nervous center. This chemical can be powerful enough to cause a significant shock. I have a strong hunch that this is the rare chemical that influences the brain to produce, to produce those increased amplitudes of energy that we've repeatedly measured in our students. Just imagine an electric eel that literally lights up with energy when it gets stimulated. That's what happens in the brain when it gets activated, but the energy and the information that are created do not come from an experience in our environment that we perceive through our senses, but instead from within the brain caused by an upgrade in frequency. When we see those high energy levels in the brain, we know that the person is having a profound subjective experience that can be measured objectively. Think about that for a moment via sensory input from our environment through our eyes, the pineal gland makes serotonin and melatonin. This visible light coming from the sun causes us to move into harmony with our environment, which we call the circadian rhythm. As a result of this process, serotonin and melatonin carry information equal to the frequency coming from the physical world. Because we perceive visible light through our senses, those molecules are inherent to humans. Thus, they are equivalent to the realm of our three-dimensional reality. Remember, as Einstein said, that the ceiling of this material world is the speed of light. What is the speed of light? Speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. That's me adding in that information. Okay, back to the book. But what happens as the brain processes an increase in frequency and information from a realm beyond the senses and beyond the speed of light? Is it possible that information and energy coming from the unified field change the chemistry of melatonin to become another chemical counterpart in the brain? And could our brain translate those frequencies into a message? If energy is the a phenomenon of matter, it makes sense that the information coming from a frequency faster than visible light will be able to be altered to molecular structure of melatonin into profound elixirs within our brain. The pineal gland is responsible for translating that information into a chemical variation of melatonin. Therefore, that molecule carries a different message equal to that frequency. That new frequency is now influencing an enhanced super chemical. That's no longer natural. That's supernatural. Melatonin gets an upgrade. Whoo! I don't know about you all, but this, this stuff right here, oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> this is some powerful stuff. This is some powerful stuff. Again, we're talking about, we're talking about elevating from a regular 3D human being to a 5D super meta being. This, this is some powerful stuff right here. I think I'm upgrading my, uh, well, it's not nighttime, so it's not melatonin at this point, but the serotonin is definitely hitting me right now. Okay, just a little bit more here uh, to read out of this. Not only... Does this phosphorescent, bioluminescent chemical increase the energy in the brain, but it enhances the imagery the mind internally perceives so that everything looks as though it's made of vivid, surreal, luminescent light. 
As a result, people have reported experiencing colors they've never seen before because they exist outside their known experience of, of the visible light spectrum. Um, I can attest to this myself. Um, I've had experiences where I've been in a super mystical brain space and I've seen colors very vividly that I've never witnessed before. And it was really hard to explain the experience to someone. And it was really transcendental. It was really, really profound. So uh, what he's talking about here, and he, I mean, he has case studies and all the backing uh, to prove what he's talking about. So, okay, back to the book. These colors appear as profound otherworldly glowing lights in a technicolor, lucid, opalescent world of suspended beauty. Everything appears as if it's em emitting beautiful light made of vivid, radiant energy that you can feel. The world of golden, shimmering, bright halos within and around everything appears more illuminated than your sensory-based reality. And of course, it will be difficult to take your attention off all of this beauty. Because of all your attention is on this experience, it will seem as though you are actually there, totally present in this other world or dimension. This is very, very true. Alter melatonin one more time and you produce the chemical DMT. One of the most powerful hallucinogenic substances known to man. This is the same chemical found in ayahuasca, a traditional spiritual plant medicine used in ceremonies by the indigenous people of the Amazon. DMT's primary active ingredient is said to create spiritual visions and profound insights into the mystery of the self. When ayahuasca and other plant chemicals containing this molecule are ingested, the body receives only DMT. But when the pineal gland is activated, it receives the whole blend of aforementioned chemicals. And this causes some very profound inner experiences. This is why I was explaining to you all that um, I'm not a huge proponent of me personally taking ayahuasca because as you stated there, when you, when you do this process in a natural state, you receive all of the benefits and your body has the inner intelligence to be able to decipher and decode the chemicals that it needs and sending it to the proper places within the brain and within the body. So this is why I'm a huge champion, a huge proponent of naturally awakening my Kundalini and naturally awakening and activating my pineal gland and third eye. Okay. So some of these experiences have been reported to create profound time dilation. Time appears infinite, time travel, journeys to paranormal realms, visions of complex geometric patterns, encounters with spiritual beings, and other mystical interdimensional realities. Many of our students during the pineal gland meditation report amazing encounters beyond their known physical world. When these chemicals are released in the brain, the mind has experiences that appear more real than anything that person has ever encountered in their sensory based reality. This new dimension is difficult to articulate with language. The novel experience that results will occur as a complete unknown. And if you surrender to it, it's always worth it. Powerful, powerful stuff there. Powerful, powerful stuff. And I wanted to I wanted to read this portion to you and I'll finish this chapter on tomorrow as we close out the uh, pineal gland series. I'll finish up the part of that chapter there. But I wanted to read that out of the book because he's touching on the mystical side of the pineal gland activation. So we will finish up on tomorrow. Um, you know, start the practice, uh, like some of the things that we went over yesterday with the meditation and all of the different practices that you can do to start to raise this energy, directing it to your brain, to your pineal gland so that you can start activating and start experiencing some of, or having some of these experiences yourself. 
because I would love to have conversations with you about these experiences. It's really hard for me to have conversations with folks uh, because, you know, a lot of them are not into this work. So those of you that are, these are the type of conversations that I love to have. So make sure that you comment. Let me know, you know, the process that you're doing, where you're at, what's happening for you, so forth and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We're going to finish out tomorrow with the last part of this series. All right. So peace and unconditional love to you. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.